Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Nuns. Today we're studying 2 Samuel chapter 15. Let's get started. Okay, 2 Samuel chapter number 15. This chapter kind of centers on a word, and it's not a good word, it's a bad word, and it is the word betrayal. John, what does the word betrayal mean? What does it mean if somebody betrays you? So, if I, if basically somebody is like on your, so in sports, maybe, I don't know. Okay. I like to make teammates, but then sometimes my teammates are mean and they help the other team a little bit, and yeah. Okay, so here's the thing about betrayal, okay? Betrayal can only happen when somebody turns against you who you trusted. So you can't be betrayed by an enemy. An enemy, you already didn't trust them. So they didn't break your trust. They were just doing what enemies do. Betrayal happens when it's somebody you know, somebody you love, somebody you trust. Now, David is still reeling from the consequences of his sin with Bathsheba. When David sinned, God told him that his sin would have consequences. Those consequences would, would increase to his whole family. And it says, as a matter of fact, that all of these things, that adversity against, or adversity against you would come from your own house. So first it came with a son and a daughter. Now it's another son. And I mean, it just keeps getting ugly from here. The story that we're going to read today, or that maybe you've already read, is about one of David's son named Absalom. Absalom was a young guy, one of David's sons, and the Bible only describes him as, 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 as real, being really good looking, but the problem was his heart. When the Bible describes him, it sets up in this chapter, he is trying to take his daddy's throne by taking his daddy's popularity. Now, here's what you got to remember when you read through this story is that where David was celebrated for being a hero, Absalom was being celebrated for just being a celebrity. Everybody liked <laughs> Orville is attacking Jax in the next room. So everybody was liking Absalom and Absalom thought, oh my goodness, I can set this up that I can take David's throne. Now, John, you kind of give us the, the, the big picture of this story. So, Absalom, he wants the throne from David, as Dad just said. So, he tries to get, like, everybody on his side. He tries to play the nice person. I don't know. Um, but, so, so far, he's doing pretty well at it. And... He says, every, he has like a bunch of spies and he tell, and the spies tell the people, every time you hear uh, the trumpet blow or something, uh, yell, Absalom is king and he wrote. He wrote. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, so he gets a lot of people on his side and he, he makes up this party. And uh, at that party, everybody is going to try to make deem him uh, king. But you can't do that unless the king is dead. So, uh, yeah, he wants to kill David now. Okay. Now, let me explain to you this story by using a story that Jesus taught. Okay? So, there was once a man with two sons. And the younger of the two sons came to the father and said, Father, give to me my inheritance and let me go and live my life however I want to. Now, if a father has an inheritance for a child, the child gets the inheritance when the father does what? When the dies. father dies. So by the son saying, Daddy, I want what, what's coming to me. I want it now. What he's saying is, Dad, let's pretend you're dead and I'm in charge and let me live my life. Listen, the story of David and Absalom is the beginning of the story of the prodigal son. If you can see those similarities, you see the beginning here. Now listen, David is not the daddy of that story in the, bigger, in the, in the, in the parable, not the bigger side. Only God is that gracious. So here's what I find. 
whenever David finds out what's happening, David is um, David's not dumb. So David gets everybody in his everybody in his house, and they leave Jerusalem. Here's why they leave Jerusalem. Because if Absalom comes back with all of those soldiers and all those important men and they come into the city ready to make Absalom king, then the one person they have to kill is who? David. Exactly. But there's a lot of people in the country that still love David. So when all of Absalom's guys that like him meet all of David's guys who like him, what's going to happen? They're going to have a fight. They're going to have a fight. And when, people, and when they have a war, what's going to happen? People are going to do what? Die. People are going to die. David is still the shepherd of this group, and a shepherd does not willingly put his sheep in harm. So for the second time in his life, David runs back out to the wilderness. Let me show you one of my favorite verses. Verse 26 says, but if he says thus, I have no delight in you, here I am, let him, this is God, let him do to me as seems good to him. So when David is asked about what's going on and what role God is going to play, David says, listen, let God do whatever it is God wants to do. So David is saying essentially here, I may have lost my throne today, but God is still on his throne. And so what David does, he's being a good shepherd, protecting his lambs by running away, getting away and keeping everybody safe back in town by him not being there. He said, if I'm going to be the problem, I'll remove myself and I'll let the Lord take care of this. I don't have to sit on the throne because God is still on the throne. And here's where we get back to betrayal. Betrayal is when people close to us turn their back on us. So the first betrayal we see here is, uh, is by David's son, Absalom. The second one uh, that we see here is an advisor named Ahithophel. Ahithophel goes along with Absalom. Do you know what David does when he's betrayed? In this story, David, he, he's, got his, he got, he's got his friends here. He's, got, he's struggling with what's happening. But I want you to look at verse number 31. Then someone told David saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. So here's what's happening. David is praying that God would handle this story. God would work everything out. And so here's the question that's asked. What do you do when even your best friends turn against you? David, here's what David does. He prays. I want you to, I want you to remember this story. This is a story about betrayal. David's response to betrayal is he prays about it. David's hope is that even if I lose my place, God still has his, and God can be trusted. So here's what we do. We take this path and recognize that nothing we have in life is certain. We could lose it all, but we can't lose the Lord. And so we can trust him with whatever happens, and we can trust that even though everybody else may betray us, God won't. All right, let's take this story. We'll see you next week as we read. All right, bye. Bye.